In this video, we are going to talk about how to generate diagnostic information from Jenkins using the Support Core plugin. Although you are using a couple of methods to configure your Jenkins controller as code, you've also been trying to figure out a way to validate those changes outside of using just configuration as code. You could manually go through and scrape Jenkins configuration files and other server-specific files. Or you could just use the Support Core plugin to collect all of this information automatically for you. So here is today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.289.2. When it was installed, it was installed using install suggested plugins. Attached to this controller, I have two agents. I have one agent that is an AMD-based agent, and I have one agent that is an ARM-based agent. Taking a look at our controller, it looks pretty simple, right? A few test jobs, and now we're ready to take a look at how do we generate this diagnostic information that we're looking for. Well, let's go ahead and go install the Support Core plugin. So we'll go over to Manage Jenkins, Manage Plugins, Available, and in Search, we're gonna type Support-Core. And right now, at the time of recording, the version is 2.74. So we'll say check mark and download now and install after restarting. What you will see here is that we have support core and we also have metrics and variant coming in as dependencies. Let's go ahead and click on restart. And what you'll see now over here on the left-hand side is a support item. So let's go ahead and click on support and let's take a look at this. A lot of text here at the beginning, but let me take you down to the part that's really interesting. All of the checkboxes that are here are checked by default. Now there are a number of items that are unchecked by default. So what we're gonna to do today is we're just going to stick with the items that are checked by default, and then we'll understand what happens here. If we go ahead and scroll down a little bit more, we can see there's a bunch of things that will get exported out when we collect this data system properties, thread dumps, user counts, all of these things will get generated for us when we generate the bundle. And in fact, you can see right here that we can generate a bundle on demand. And that's typically how you might do this. You might come into the user interface and click on the generate bundle. There is also a CLI option to generate the bundles from a command line. So let's go ahead and generate a bundle so we can take a look at what is inside of a bundle. So we'll click on Generate Bundle. And once it starts up here, you'll have the option to save the file. And it will come in as a zip file, so I'm going to say OK. And I'm saving it, I'm not going to automatically open it. Let me get Finder open here for us. And we'll say Download Support. And there is our zip file. Let's go ahead and extract it. So when a bundle is generated, it follows a naming convention, support underscore, and the date time stamp. Okay, so here we've got support. Now, what do we have here? Well, this looks like a lot of files, a lot of markdown files to be more specific. And you wouldn't be wrong. These are markdown files. Now we can go in through each of these, but let me open up an editor so we can take an easier look at these files. Now the place that you probably want to start once you open up the bundle is the about.md file. This gives you an overview of what's going on inside of your controller. You can see here at the very beginning, it tells us the version, which is 289.2. It gives us the URL, what type of mode it's running in, which is the WAR file in my case. It's using Jetty. It also tells us what version of Java is being used to run this process. In this case, it's 11.0.11. And we can see that I'm on an operating system of Linux of AMD64 and also the JVM startup parameters. So in case you're wondering, okay, what parameters are actually being used to start this, this is all exposed through here. It also tells us how long the process has been up and running. In my case, I just started it because we did the reboot after installing the support core plugin. So it's been about three minutes when we took this bundle. For remoting details, this remoting is for connecting to our agents. So we know that the embedded version is 4.7, but this minimum tells us what is the minimum version that could be used. So if we had an agent that was running an older version of remoting, 
it would have to at least adhere to this version. We can see here that we're using a security realm of a private security realm and full control once we've logged in. If you were to take a look at configure global security, these are the checkboxes that you would select or the radio buttons, depending on which one it is. And then here is the list of all of our active plugins with the version of the plugin that has installed. So it's the plugin ID, the plugin version, and then the full description of the plugin. Don't want to do that. There we go. And that's what the about page tells us. So that's pretty much it from an about perspective. But you're looking at this and going, you know, that's not really that interesting. Well, let's take a look at a couple of the other ones that may be a little more interesting. Secondly is the items MD. Now, in my case, I have three jobs set up on my controller. Remember, I had a freestyle job, or maybe you don't remember. Let's take a look at it again. If we go back over to dashboard, we can see here that I have a test freestyle, and you just trust me that the names match the type of job underneath. But I have a freestyle, a multi-branch, and a pipeline. So if we go back over and take a look at items, we see that we have a freestyle project, a workflow job, which is pipeline, and then I have a workflow multi-branch project, which is our multi-branch. And we can see each one of these is a count of one. Let's take a look at one of the folders that's over here. We can take a look at plugins. And under the plugins folder, there are four files. There's active, backup, disabled, and failed. So if we take a look at failed, there's nothing there because this is a fresh controller. Nothing's failed. Disabled, we haven't disabled any, so nothing's listed here. Backup, this is used in case you upgrade a plugin and then the version that was there previously is now marked as the backup. So if you were to look inside of your Jenkins home directory inside of plugins or wherever your JPI files exist or HPI files exist, you may see them renamed every once in a while. You would have a listing of those here. But let's take a look at active. This looks very familiar to what we just saw inside of the about MD file. We have the plugin ID and the version. But what's interesting about this? Well, I can take a look at this and know exactly what plugins I have and what versions they have. Why is that interesting? Well, I could take this text file, parse it out, and then use that data elsewhere to keep track of this over time. Now you're thinking, you know what? That's again, okay, Darren, that's pretty interesting, but you know, not really. I need to understand what's going on with each of the machines that I have attached to my Jenkins controller, as well as the Jenkins controller itself. Here's where it gets really interesting. Let's go over to notes. I'm gonna close that up and go to notes. Notice we have a master section and a slave section. So names will probably be changing over time, but this is what it is for right now. Let's take a look at master. So this is all the files that are associated with our controller. I can take a look at my syscuttle and understand what's going on inside of syscuttle. I can take a look at system properties and get information about the system properties. But here's where it gets interesting in my opinion. I can take a look at proc. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, what type of CPU do I have on this machine? Maybe I don't have any other analytics or I don't have access to analytics. I can go take a look at CPU info and see that, oh, processor zero. Well, that's it. So that means I have one CPU. Or I can take a look at mem info and see that, oh, this is a one gig box. Really small, don't use that in real life kits. But I can understand what's going on with my memory at this point in time when the support bundle was taken. So as we finish up taking a look at our agents that are connected here, we'll close this up, we'll go over here. Remember I said earlier that I have two agents. I have an AMD-based agent and I have an ARM-based agent. I know that the agent one is my AMD-based agent, but how do I know that? Well, I can take a look at system properties and go down to OS Arc and see that it's AMD64. If I go over to my agent two and do the same thing with system properties, then I can see OS Arc is ARM. So having this information available to you from a file means that you can grab this data, load it up, and understand better what's happening as you build out your controllers over time. Now, for some of you eagle-eyed viewers, you may have seen something about anonymization. Now, what does anonymization mean in the context of a support bundle? 
Well, what that means is we are able to anonymize IP addresses and host names from the bundles. So when you're analyzing them over time, or if you're sending them to someone else to analyze for you, you're not potentially leaking data that you don't want to leak out, such as IP addresses and host names. So let's figure out the places to where we might see this anonymization take place. So I'm going to stay in Agent 2 for the moment, and I'm going to go to environment.txt. And under SSH connection, we can see here that the IP address of 168.161 is the IP address of my agent. If we were to take a look at Agent 2, we can see that the IP address of this one is 192.168.32.15. So what I want to do is have these IP addresses anonymized because I don't want to leak IP addresses out to the world for any reason. Even though there are inside addresses, yes, it's not that big of a deal, but for some people, it is a big deal. They just don't want any IP addresses going out. Not a bad idea. So how do we do this? So let's head back over to our controller and turn on anonymization. Now, how do you do this? Well, it's actually pretty simple if you think about it from a support bundle perspective. We're going to click on support. And we can see here in big yellow, support bundle anonymization is disabled. This can be enabled in the global security under support bundle anonymization. So let's just click over to that from here. And we'll scroll down to support bundle anonymization. We'll check that box and then click save. And let's generate a new bundle. Now you can also see here at this point, support bundle anonymization is enabled. You can view the anonymized mappings here or manage anonymized settings in global security, which is the checkbox. Let's go down to the bottom, click on generate bundle. That is going to be saved. And let me go ahead and load that bundle up in our editor. Let's scroll up here to the top. And our second bundle is now here, 1612 versus the one that was earlier, which is 55. So this is the older one at the top, which is we have open. We'll close this up. And now let's take a look at 16, which is the one we just generated. We'll do the same thing. We'll go to nodes. Let's go down here. And we can see here now, instead of it saying agent one, now agent is a phrase that will be anonymized. It's now been changed with computer underscore left oil or computer underscore productive here. Again, agent one, agent two got anonymized. Let's see what this one is. We know that one of these is ARM and we know that one is AMD. Let's take a look at environment text. We can tell from here based on a username, this is Pi. Yes, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. We can also see here that this one is going to be showing now our IP emotional road or IP art artistic village. If we were to take a look at system properties, just to re-verify it here from an OS arc perspective, this one is also changed from ARM to label judicial nerve. Again, because I can take a look at this and know based on home Pi, I know this is my Raspberry Pi. Versus the second one, if I take a look at system properties, let's go to OS arc and see what happens here. OS arc stayed AMD 64. So ARM got anonymized, but AMD64 did not. So what are the benefits of using the Support Core plugin? First, it gives you the ability to analyze your Jenkins controller and some of the data about your agents in an offline way. Secondly, by extracting the data from the bundle and loading it into your favorite data storage engine, you'll be able to track the diagnostic data over time. And finally, if you are a CloudBees client, the CloudBees support plugin is installed by default. And since it's based on support core, you'll get all of the benefits that we've talked about today. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees Devs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell. And you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.